uh, coming last June, and as we've talked about, you know, uh, Pastor has actually probably asked me since I left to go to college, hey, when are you coming, when are you coming back to Madison? And, you know, hey, we, we'd love to have you come in Madison. And, and as we started talking about, hey, how can we at Catholic City Church make disciples like Andrew, you know, like, hey, come on up, come on up. And so last year when Rachel and I um, moved, it'll be, it'll be a year, June 4th, so almost a year now, that we've uh, come and joined the staff team at Catholic City Church. It's been exciting to see uh, us talk about and continue to talk about being a family of servant missionaries who, make, who are disciples, who make disciples of Jesus. And so we started, uh, you guys know, we had started the missional communities. We have one on, on the west side, one on the, uh, on, I guess the far west, Middleton, and one here locally in Sheboygan Avenue area. And we're continuing to pray that God would allow us in this next year um, to, to see those expand. So we've been praying and got together as a leadership of, of the church, we, a pastor, myself and Rachel, and Brad and Crystal, and said, hey, what would be like God-sized goals for this next year that we can kind of look forward to? So we have two missional communities that we're meeting and meeting our neighbors and having different cookouts. And we would, we're praying that God would see in the next year that we would go from two to four missional communities. And so we thought, okay, well, what's that going to take? So we're going to continue to develop leaders. If, you're, if you feel a call, say, hey, yeah, I would love to see a missional community in my, my part of town. And, and you want to continue to see disciples made in your area, say, hey, let us know. And we're going to continue to, to teach on Sunday morning in such a way that we want, want you to be equipped. The reason why I read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, the 16 through um, 21 passage this morning was because it's amazing to see us as a church becoming mature into thinking ourselves as ministers of reconciliation. That we're not just, hey, people that we meet on Sunday morning and hey, the rest of the week, we'll see you guys next week. But no, you know, we're building relationships. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing God use us in those everyday, everyday life situations. So uh, as an effective pastor, I just want to continue to continue to be here to equip us to be able to be that, to be people that see ourselves not just as a Sunday morning attender, but somebody that every, every day of life, God can use me to bring somebody else closer to Him. So uh, that's my report for this year. Next year, maybe I'll be more official and have even stats and things like that with that. But I'm, I'm encouraged that as, uh, as I'm meeting with people, as, as we come each week, that we're beginning to see incremental changes in us viewing all of life. At, under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So thank you guys for allowing me to be here. You know, uh, as Dion was saying, even the giving, we've seen giving increase, and I'm, I'm encouraged that we're seeing even, we had some baptisms in the last year, and hopefully, that with by God's grace, we'll continue to see people's lives being changed. So thank you guys, and uh, with us continue to make disciples here in Madison. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to continue um, to give my report of my sermon. Is that okay? That way we don't have to do two different things. I thought, why am I going to give a report and then give a sermon? So I'm trying to change the way we do uh, church. Is that okay? So I hope that every one of us here will know each other outside this building this morning. Amen? That we'll get to know each other's lives. We'll get to pray for each other, encourage each other to continue to be disciples. Not only that, help encourage each other as... Uh, Annie said to help other people reconcile their lives to God. And that's where I'm going to start off today with what God told me uh, years ago. And then if you would just, would you, we're going to go through about four or five scripture verses um, to, to summarize, I guess, what, where we're going and why we're doing it. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something at the same time. Uh, and at the end of the sermon, I'll tell you why it's so important that you learn what I just taught you. Is that okay? At the end, I'm going to share with you, you have to understand that the true gospel is what we all are supposed to live and, and give away and encourage other people to grow in also. Amen? It's not just for ourselves. We're saved and we're all, we're good. I, I made it to heaven. I made my commitment. I asked Jesus in my heart and I'm good. It's more than that. And I'm learning that I have to teach it. Maybe I've been teaching it wrong. Is that okay? Can I say that? Maybe I haven't really been explaining it properly, or we just created an atmosphere where we just attend church on Sunday. Maybe I should reinforce in, in my heart and mind that I'm going to share with you 
uh, this concept, if you will, that we're to live for Jesus every moment, every second of our lives. Now, how do we do that? That's what we have to learn, right? If I'm uh, a college student, if I'm a professional here, if I'm, I do whatever I do, I, I do it for the glory of God. Amen. All of my life for the glory of God. So let's go to the, the, the verse that kind of got us all rubbed up on this. Matthew chapter 28. Some of us may know this by heart. Some of us probably learned it in Sunday school. But I, I want to reinforce, uh, I want to share it with you from my heart. Um, and hear my heart today that there's more, there's more, there's more than just showing up to church on Sunday. You say amen? Amen. Say oh my because we're going to change that. To say amen. We're, it's going to be done. Amen. We're going to live for God because that's what God intends us to do in the, in the world that we live in, in the profession that we, we, we have for ourselves. Whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God because we want to see others come to uh, the full knowledge of Christ. So look at this. And this is called the Great Commission in my Bible, but it's just, you know, God's commission to us. It says, then he said to the 11, and the, uh, verse 16, then. Then the eleven uh, disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had took them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus said to them, and, uh, uh, and Jesus uh, came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So I believe that God has commanded all of us to do the same thing. If we baptize people in the name of the Father, because we're family, you are called his sons and his daughters. Can you say amen? Amen. Some of you may have never heard that before, but you are his sons and you are his daughter. Right? We're baptizing in Jesus because we're baptizing in Jesus. <coughs> He came and died for the world. We come to serve the world so they would come to know Yes. Him. Amen? We're baptized in the Holy Spirit to be the messengers to bring the word to the dying nation, dying world. So they will, will you know, so I guess for me, I don't know, do you ever, anybody get chicken about sharing Jesus with anybody? You know, you're like, you know you're supposed to share Jesus with your friend or your neighbor, but you get afraid to do that? How many ever done that? Just me? Okay, but I mean, it happens, right? So I... I, I overcome my fear because the Holy Spirit's right there going, go ahead. You can do it. Right? Go ahead and share. Go ahead and bring a plate of cookies to your neighbor. Go ahead and share Jesus with them at this time. They come to you with a problem. What's the answer to every problem in the world? Let's see. Can anybody answer this question? What is the problem to every question or problem in the world? Jesus. It is. Jesus said these are two commandments that we're supposed to obey. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. And love your neighbor Come on, you can say it as yourself. That's right. These are the two greatest commandments. We love uh, God and Ma Mark, Luke, uh, Mark, Matthew, and Luke record that. So the commandments. Of this, I mean, if you could just write this down, circle it in your Bible. These are two things. If I, if Pastor said I had to do this. I had to love God and love my neighbor. So maybe we have a love issue, then we have an obedience issue, right? Maybe I want to obey God, but I have trouble loving. These people are loving my neighbor because you don't know how grumpy my neighbor is. You know how, you know, they don't cut their grass or they just leave their trash out or, or whatever excuses we have. But God's telling you to love that person. How many has trouble with that besides myself? <laughs> right? Love God with all my heart, with all my soul. So we have a, in the church, I think, and we, don't, I said, we don't have a religious problem. Maybe we have a religious problem. I think we have a love problem. How can I put in you, how can I convey to you that God loves you unconditionally? He loved you before you were formed. He loved you before the founding. He loved you. Yep. Yep. And when I finally said yes to God, like I'm going to follow him, I remember the, the forgiveness, the love that flowed through me. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me. I was cleansed, I was new, I was a, a new creature, something happened in me, I can't explain even to this day, but it changed me that moment as I said yes to following Jesus. The love of God just flowed through me. And he says, take that love and give it to your neighbor. 
give it to people, right? Isn't that what the gospel about the spirit of reconciliation as Andy shared a little earlier? It's, it's to take the love that you receive, the forgiveness that you receive, the peace that you forgive, you receive, and just give it away to other people. Don't keep it for yourself. We're a very selfish generation, aren't we? Me, me, I, I, we want, right? I want to keep it. But it's really for us to receive and give away. Amen? Share the love of God to the, to the world around us. I'm going to share with you uh, three, four more verses. And I want to, the last one is in Ephesians uh, chapter uh, 4. I want to explain that, why it's so important. And I thank you for giving and doing all those wonderful things and, and praying for Tina and I and praying for Andy and Rachel and for Brad and Crystal, all the, the board, uh, Rick Rajiv and, and Dion and and break now, uh, pray for them, pray that for the leadership of the church, that we will continue to teach you how to love other people. Amen? And we continue to teach you to be disciples of Jesus so you can make disciples. That's our responsibility. I'll share that in a little bit. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 1. If you have your Bibles or use your cell phone, but please would you just turn to there, chapter 1, and verse... Uh, um, this is, uh, so Tina and I and Andy uh, went to, uh, Andrew, uh, went to a conference uh, this week in uh, Chicago. It's called the Verge Conference, and it was really good. And so it kind of reinforced um, some things in our hearts. Uh, of course, we're not, you know, it's like every time you go to a conference, you don't bring that whole thing and try to change your church. What you do is you take the spirit of it, because God's leading us to help you understand the depth of his love. I don't feel forgiven because you don't understand your love, love for that, how much God loves you. I don't feel worthy because you don't understand how much God loves you. How many feel that? Like I'm unworthy to be in God's presence, but God's saying, no, no, you come to me. Because Jesus provided that forgiveness through his son. He loves us. Well, let, this is a prayer. Tina and I have been writing out some prayers for you guys, and this is one of the things that we're, we're going to be praying over you. It says, verse 3, it says, We always give thanks. We always thank God, the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you because we have heard your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints and the faith and the love that springs from the hope that is stored up, uh, stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth the gospel that has come to you all over the world the gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you have heard it and understand God's grace and all of it. True. You learned it from the Ephesians, our, uh, um, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ, our, um, of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. So you've learned, it, it, it's something, it, the, the love of God is something that has to be learned. We have, to, we have to grow in that. We have to understand that that love that God wants us to walk in, it, it comes from Him. And it's, I, I don't know about you, but it's like a hard thing sometimes, isn't it? To walk in God's love. It's like we have to be reminded. So on Sunday morning, as we go through our sermon series, as we teach, we're going to remind you to walk in God's love, that God loves you and He cares for you, and to be able to share that love with you. And that's gonna, this is going to be a prayer we're going to pray over you. So let's say, uh, and well, well, Pastor, I don't really feel like I'm really walking in that. I said, well, that's okay, because I'm going to pray over you anyway. Right? I'm, I'm going to believe that it's going to happen, and you're going to walk in the love of God, and it's going to restore you, He's going to reconcile you to God, and you're going to help others reconcile that to God. Now, if you will, turn to Ephesians chapter 1, back one book, or two books, I should say. In verse 17 through 19, I'll start there. It says, I, uh, keeping, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and, re and revelation so that you may know him better. So there's another prayer that we're praying over you for this year. That, you, uh, that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of what? Of who he is. Right? Because we're so busy. How many is really busy? You had a busy week. We've been, we came back from vacation. I think we stopped since then. Now, every night we have something going on. We're doing something, going somewhere, sitting, being somewhere. And so we know we're really busy. We're saying, hey, Father, would you brought your spirit on everyone that's here, part of our church family? 
that we'd walk as a family of servant missionaries, that we'd understand the fullness of that, what it means to, uh, to be a family, which I think we do a pretty good job of. Amen? By fellowship together, have meals together, and hanging out together, I think we do a great job of that. Then the other part of being servant, serve not really the people in this church, because I, I think we relegated servanthood uh, in the church world is to the building on Sunday morning. So we say, okay, uh, we have uh, all the people that worked on the worship team today, praise God for them, the nursery, the children's ministry, we, that's all serving, and we're going to have people set up tables on the stairs, we're going to have food today, you know, so we're all serving, that's great, we love that, but it's really actually serving, it's just, it's just, we're, we want to expand that service to the world around us, amen? So whatever that means, you know, you walk, you drive down the road, you see a need, you, you, you're, you see a neighbor in need, you, you just want to, you want to help them, so the church is not just relegated, I mean, not just in this whole round right here. Um, uh, Spirit was around us, so that you may know Him better, know Jesus better. I pray also that your eyes and your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you were called. You, uh, the rich, riches, righteous, um, riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints and in the in all that. So, I mean, we're just going through that whole thing. I don't want to read the whole thing because it's just like, you know, I can start reading the Word of God, I just don't want to stop. How many read your Bible every day? Raise your hand real quick. No, just kidding. Don't, don't. How many know you should read your Bible every day? <laughs> right. We know we should, but we don't. Why do we want to read our Bible? Why do we know we should? Well, the pastor said you're supposed to. Or as we read the Word of God, it brings a revelation to us on who God is, and our spirit hungers for more and more and more. And then when we don't do it, we feel guilty about not going back to doing it, right? If it's just me or is it everybody here? You know what I'm saying? I know I should be reading the Word because I know it brings life to me. Because every time I read it, I get excited about it. It brings a revelation of the love of God in my heart. And I just want to love on God more. And that's what the Word of God is supposed to do. It's supposed to do that. So as we teach on Sunday morning, we want to bring to you the Word, the truth, so we can, uh, in our hearts, our spirit, will desire to want to be more like Jesus. To want to be more like God, to, to know Him. Like every problem in your life, I mean, God's gonna got an answer for it. So let's like like me and Richard when we prayed, we didn't really pray for the the finances. We just prayed that God would glor be glorified, and He did, and He was, Amen. And I still can be able to tell that story today. So it's it's God's love. Now let's turn to Ephesians chapter three, just a little uh, a couple, uh, one verse, chapter over, uh, fourteen through nineteen. In fact, just go home and read a whole book of Ephesians, okay? I think it would be really good for us. <laughs> uh, 14 through 19 says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he might strengthen you in power through, uh, uh, with power through the Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of Christ, and to know uh, his love and sur uh, pass, uh, sur surpasses knowledge, that you may feel uh, to the measure, you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of Christ. So we're praying this. We're praying that you, are, and I like reading the scripture, it says, for this reason, I kneel before God the Father, for our whole family, for our, all the family of believers here, that you'll know Him, His strength, His power, His love for you. So we just, we're praying that over you. So you have this revelation of who God is, and that, I don't know, for Let me share, just my heart is this, that, that we as a congregation, as a church family in Madison, and there's many great congregations in Madison, there's many churches doing wonderful things, but if we together, as we grow, we're taking a, um, maybe a, a, an extra step in this relationship with God as a church family. So we say we've created missional communities, and why did we do that? Because if we understand this word correctly, we understand and we understand what, how the church life has gone for many, many years. It's just been this Sunday thing. And how do we break that? Well, we break it by relationship. We break it at, at understanding the mission that God sent, gave us as, as a congregation. So it's a little more Christianity than it is just showing up. So discipleship 
And we say, in Matthew says that, we're, that we are to be his disciples, right? And we are to make disciples. So what is a definition of being a disciple? Think about that for a second. Okay, I, I'm a disciple of Jesus. The word disciple is, I'm a learner of Jesus. And what we learn about Jesus as a disciple, we should be able to duplicate that and make disciples also. So it wasn't just the disciples, it wasn't just the pastors that, matter of fact, it's not even, uh, am I correct, Andy? It's not even our responsibility to make disciples, is it? Not really. We're going to train disciples, we're going to teach you, but it's actually everyone here that's sitting here is responsibility to make disciples. Make followers of Jesus. Make learners of Jesus. Make people that are hungry after Jesus. People that love Jesus. That is your responsibility. So again, the responsibility would happen over years, centuries and centuries and centuries. The, 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 uh, the pastors, the leaders of the church, the priests of the church, all the different denominations, they, they, they have, you have this professional uh, leadership that's all of a sudden, they're responsible to make disciples. And it's, it's not. It's like everybody's. That's how the church grew so fast in the early centuries, if you read the book of Acts. It grew because everybody knew that they should share this love and this change in life. And the church grew by thousands. All of a sudden, then when you know, a few people felt like they had to organize this, and now we have what we have today. So we're going to try our best is to help you understand your responsibility as disciple makers of Jesus. Say, I don't know what that means. Could you imagine, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking, so uh, we have teenagers going to high school sharing Jesus and the whole high school gets saved and follow Jesus, would that be great? Instead of all the junk they're trying to push in our schools. Or on our college campuses, we have people that understand that they need to share their faith with their, 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 their classmates and all of a sudden we see this revival flow through our campuses. And some campuses we're seeing that happen. So as a church family here, I'm thinking like, if, as a missional community, we're just saying, in your neighborhood where you live, to share Jesus with the people around you, and then it'll begin to grow. Amen? And they may, and listen, they may come to your house for dinner, and they, you might be able to be real good friends with them, but they may never come here on Sunday morning. That might be okay with me. I could never say that a couple years ago. Because you're responsible to make disciples for Jesus. Let me show you that in Scripture. Look at Ephesians chapter uh, 4. I'm going to be kind of closing with this, but it's going to take a few minutes. It talks about the unity of the body of Christ, and then it talks uh, that Jesus gave certain people to help the body of Christ, all right? And it's in verse, uh, let's see verse 11. It says, It was He, meaning Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors. And teachers to prepare, now look at verse 12, to prepare God's people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the full measure of, of uh, the full measure of the fullness of Christ. So here we have a scripture verse, and we see that God's given certain people for what? To help you, to prepare you, to prepare God's people to work of services. The work of service. What's the work of service? Sharing Christ's love. Serving the people, the community around us. To share the heart, your heart change, what happened here to the world around you. So the work of service that the body of Christ being built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the full measure. Uh, how, many are, how many mature Christians? Don't raise your hand. How many mature Christians do we have here? How many have attained to the fullness of the knowledge of Christ? Does anybody have the full? So we, have, we look at ourselves and say, well, maybe I'm not quite there, so we're going to help encourage you to do that. It says that verse 14 says that we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the winds of blowing here and there. So that's why, I, when I read this, I don't talk about political issues in church. I really don't care what's going on in the world. I don't care who becomes president of the United States. Because I have a king that's above all kings. I serve him, amen? So I'll pray for the leadership. I'll pray for our country. I'll pray for those things. But you know what? It doesn't really matter at the end because it's not going to affect my Christianity. It's going to affect who I am because my identity is with Christ. Amen? Come on, say amen. You know it's right. So we talk about all the political... Pray for all the people that are having trouble. Pray for all the discord in, in, in our country and, and across the world. Pray for those people that are being persecuted for gospel's sake. Pray for them. Don't, don't hide. Don't, don't not do that. But I'm saying it doesn't affect me. 
right? So I don't have to watch CNN, I don't have to watch all of the Fox, I don't have to watch all this stuff all the time and go, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to still share Jesus with people after, after the election. Right? I'm going to love on people. I'm going to, I'm going to see them come to Jesus. Because I know that relief and peace and hope is only in Christ Jesus. So I want, I want to share that with you. Like, come on. You know, we, we don't have to be scared about what's going on in the world. What if the stock market crashes and everybody loses their money? My hope is not in my checking account. My hope is in Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. But that's not what you've been taught all your life. You've been taught work hard, get the good grades, get a job, right? B build a bank account, do all that stuff. But listen, in reality, it's Jesus, right? Our hope is in Him, not in our, what, what this world has to offer. My, my, my king has conquered this. Amen? Come on, smile now. You know that's good, right? You know that's good? It's good. It, it, the, so we, we're not, we're not going to have any fear. So no longer are we, if, that's why I said, when I said this about infants, I was thinking about that. You know, we, you know, this is happening, and this is happening, and this movement's happening, all these things are going on in the world, and we're all freaked out about what to do. We don't need to be. We, we're not, we have a confidence, and we have a foundation that's in Christ Jesus. We have a hope there, amen? So then, we, um, uh, then okay, let me just read 14 again. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth, by waves and blowing here and there, by every wind of teaching, and by cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful schemings, instead of speaking the truth in love, that's what we do, uh, we will in all things grow up in Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him the whole body joined and, and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does work. You know what's something I have to re-examine? personally? It's like, do I love everybody? Do I really love, like, everybody? Do I, can I love, like, Jesus? Loves? My prayer, maybe it could be your prayer this week, too. Lord, help me love people like you love them. Like, when I, like, I get frustrated, what, am I love, am I being loving in this situation? Does anybody get mad or frustrated about situations? Like, am I, am I, am I in that moment, am I creating, am I, am I loving properly? You know, I have to answer that for myself. And am I being like Christ? Look at verse 17. So I tell you this, and it's, and it's, um, insist on it in the Lord that you must no long, you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, uh, in in the few I can't even speak futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from their life of God. So don't be like the Gentiles that have no hope. I think I was, um, I mean, the life before I became a believer was a lot different than my life now. Can you say that? I had no hope. I had no I mean, I, I, everything was self-seeking. I served myself. I satisfied myself. Everything was for me. But as I become a believer, I begin to, I begin to change. And my heart and my mind and my actions and everything was, it, it changed. And, and I saw, and I remember the day I got saved. I remember um, walking outside for the first time, seeing the blue sky and the green grass and saying, wow. This is just really amazing. And then now I look at people, I look at people like, just different. So it's really hard for me, like Deanna says, it's really hard for me when people call and ask for help at the church. I, I, have to, I, I, I need help with yes. I need help with yes. Yes, I need that, okay? And uh, for, me, for a long time, it's just been money out of my own pocket. It's, you know, it doesn't matter. We have, these guys, they, they know. It, we just, yeah. So something changes in us when we're, we're believers. But then as we... Get this Christianity thing for a while. All of a sudden, we something happens. I don't know. We get callous. We get like, well, they should get a job, or you know, we start talking. We say things that just is uncompassionate, unloving, uncaring. And I, you know, it's like, well, no. When the Bible tells us, when people ask, we should just help them. Like, just help them. Like, I mean, if they're asking you, I mean, I think God knows like what you have, what kind of resources you have. You know, I think He knows that. You know, God knows more than we. So when somebody asks, it's like, 
I just, you know, sometimes, you know, we start that, uh, maybe not you, but, you know, we start that judging thing, you know, like, oh, they should, you know, get a job or go to school or get an education or what, you know, you start doing that. But that's not really how it works, right? Because God, Jesus sacrificed everything for you and me, and we should just, you know, be that way, be loving, be loving, be caring. And there's a, there is a, we, we learned a little bit, there's a point where you, help and then you um, teach also, you know, so maybe somebody might need some help with finances or teaching, you know, how to budget a, a their income. I mean, there's some help there too, you know, so it depends on, it's, it's, so so to me it's like not just helping somebody with here's uh, a gift, but maybe, uh, maybe I need to get to know this person's story, like why do you need 20 bucks or whatever, like what, what's going on in your life? share your story. And then also now I know her story, right? I know that, you know, maybe she came from a weird situation, a, a abusive situation, or whatever, got her in that situation. But before it was just giving a $20 bill, but now it's like, hey, I know her story. I know what she's dealing with. And now I, I, I have compassion because now it's just not a gift. Right? This love is, is Christ's love. Christ, Christ didn't go to the woman at the well and said, okay, you know, I know all your husbands and I know all your problems and, you know, he rejected her. No, he just sat there and talked with her and shared hope with her and she changed her life. Her heart changed and then the whole village got saved. It's, it's just simply amazing that what the love of Christ will do. So maybe our prayer should be this year is that, Lord, let me love like you love. Let me change my heart like you do. Lord, if I could love you like you commanded, I can love others, then I would see things differently. Then it wouldn't be about, the church wouldn't be about consumerism, but it would be about service. Right? It wouldn't, the church wouldn't be about what's in it for me. So it's 2016, Capital City Church. I don't want us to just consume, but I want us to be servants of each other and the world around us. 2016, I want, to, I want to see our hearts change to love God. What happens? What happens in that moment when you say, God, I, I want to love you more? For, for one, I'm not standing. I'm usually on my knees, right? I'm in a position like, well, I, I, I'm not worthy to even be in your presence, God. But he says to me, stand up. I don't feel worthy to be in God's presence. He says, Hey, my son provided a way for us to talk, walk in the cool of the garden at night together. Remember Adam and Eve in the beginning? Remember how God walked with them and talked with them? That's what God wants to walk with you in every part of your life. <coughs> so here's a, here's a mental um, exercise. I have to submit all of my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I have to submit all of my heart all of my mind, all of my will to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. How many? Don't raise your hand. Annie told me I stopped doing that. I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm still learning. Submit all of my life to the Lordship. What would it look like if we submitted all of our life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Wow, I would have peace in areas that I don't have peace in. Right? Because He's taking care of that situation for me. The fear in my life will be gone. I'd like, God, I don't need to walk in fear. Fear is not from God. His love is from God. So let me walk in love. Amen? Because I can't share, I really can't share my faith with anybody because I don't, I, don't, I don't have the security in my heart yet that I know that God loves me and cares for me. So Lord, help me this year, the rest of this year anyway, to submit my heart and my mind to your Lordship so I can love you like Jesus commanded me to do. Love God with all our heart, mind, soul, body, strength. I love Him. And then, you know, I think all the rest of this kind of falls into place. Right? If I love God, then I think I can, I can do what I read. And really, the other doing part is this. It's really simple. Um, I, I'm finding more and more as I read and I grow in this thing, like this, this gospel is so simple. It is like, this is not hard to be a Christian. It might be hard because I don't even have to fear death. That's what I talked about this morning when I was praying. I don't even have to fear death, because death has already been conquered. So if I die today, I'm going to be with God. I mean, I'm cool with that, right? If I go leave the church building, I get an accident on the way home, and I die, I'm, I'm going to be with Jesus. Or if I'm in the Middle East, and I'm being executed for 
for Christ's sake, there's no fear there. Don't think about that in America as much. There's no fear. God conquered death. Come on, that's like, I, I wish I could play guitar so we could just like jam out to Jesus right now, you know. God conquered death for you and me. That's awesome. There's no fear in our life because God loves me and I love him. Every sin can be forgiven. Can you say amen? It's been paid for by his blood. We've been washed and cleansed by him. I mean, that's, a, that's amazing. And <coughs> Because he does that, because I love him, because of joy, I cannot help but share it with people. I can't help because the love flows in me. I just can't help when I see a need or see or hear a situation or hear some people talking at work and I hear the problems they're dealing with, I want to go help them. Listen, the problem you're having, God can overcome that. But I might be laughed at because I'm a Christian or I might, you know, people might persecute me or... Like that lady that came up from, from Louisiana that was here, lost her job because she wouldn't uh, stop talking about Jesus. Maybe that, I don't know. <coughs> God loves you, and we love you. Amen? One more. Verse 20 through 24, Ephesians 4. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him. Of course, with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former ways of life to put off your old life, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self created to be like Jesus, or by, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Look at that in verse 24 in the Bible. I mean, this is really interesting. In Genesis, you got to know Genesis to be able to understand this. In the beginning, God created a man and a woman. Did he not? And he created that man and woman in whose image? Yeah. In his image. So now here he's saying in Ephesians, reminding us, reminding us, put on the new self, put on your new self, the new person, not the person that you were before as a sinner, but a new person that been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, right? It says, put on a new, uh, created, uh, new self, created to be like who? God. In true righteousness and holiness. So, saints, listen. You can walk in true righteousness and holiness. Everybody's saying, oh, not me. I'm not even worthy, right? It's not me. No, this is what the Word of God says. You can, putting off the old life, Putting on a new creature, we can walk like God wants us to walk in the beginning. This is what's so beautiful about the Word of God. Old and New Testament go, comes together and says, listen, in the garden, when I created man and woman, that we walked together, we talked together. I don't know how it was like. Could you imagine that God showed up at your house around, you know, in, about dinner time? And like you just hang out and talk with him? I mean, God loved him. He must have been a gardener too, because I think he like walked through the garden, it says in Genesis. Hey, look at those beautiful flowers. I created those. I created that one too. How beautiful that flower is. And talk. I mean, that's what God wants to do with us. See, we, we are now restored to that. We are His daughters and His sons. We're now restored to be in His image. And so everything we do in our life right now, we bear the very image of God. We'll say, well, I'm not a very good God, God imager person. Is that a word? I'm not, I'm not really creating, I mean, my, 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 if people really know me, they probably wouldn't really know I'm a Christian. Right? I, I don't walk in that love. I don't walk in that newness. But listen, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you today. Walk in that newness. Walk, take off the old. That's what we're going to do in just a minute. We're going to have communion together. And uh, Rajiv and Dion, would you come and help me? And uh, they're going to they're gonna pass, we're actually just going to hold the emblems. We're going to have a, a cup on one side here, and we're going to have a, a loaf of bread. Considering that one loaf, uh, representing this one body, that who we are in Christ, and that's why we did this today. So you come and take a piece off, and it, and we're gonna uh, come and get the cup after you take a moment to reflect on what I, I shared with you today, and then we're gonna pray over that together, take it together, Amen. Why are we having communion today? Because I believe communion doesn't only share. We don't only share His suffering. We don't only share in when he, we remember what He suffered and died for us. 
He suffered and died that we can be a new creature in Christ. But also we, we remember his coming, that he's going to come back like he said he would. But I think even more important than that, as we take communion today, God has commissioned us to be his disciples, to make disciples. Are we saying today as we take communion, yes, Lord, I want to be your disciple. And yes, Lord, help me to make disciples for your kingdom. Amen? Because other people need to hear this good news. Amen? And you and I are commissioned to do that very thing. That's why I like what you shared about the finances, Dion. And I heard this yesterday, and I'm just going to repeat it. I thank you for giving so Andy and I can train you to expand the kingdom of God here in Madison. Amen? I thank you for your giving. Because I get a little salary, Andy gets a little salary, we get enough to live on, we're happy, God's blessed us also, and so we just want to, we just thank you. I want to, I thank you for allowing us to minister and encourage you to walk in God's kingdom. Amen? Praise the Lord. So let's take a moment right now. Let's stand. Um, would you guys come, please? Uh, Richard, you and, and Dion.